What is up everybody? Welcome to another short data logging video. You guys might have seen this video in the past. It is how to data log your AFR. But if you haven't seen that video, I'd really recommend you to check it out first. The problem I had was there was a bust at the end. I actually had to make some, comp uh, some compromises to actually record the screen and we lost a load of data because of it. So there's actually another way we can actually analyze the data properly instead of just recording the screen. And that is what I'll be sharing with you. So if you haven't watched that video yet and you've got a bunch of questions to ask, I'll probably answer all your questions in that video so first go check out that video uh probably gonna be this corner i'll drop the card for you i think i've already dropped it just just make sure you go check it out i'll drop it also in the description for you guys and then once the data has been analyzed or you're about to analyze it you already got the data with vcds that is where you want to watch this video and see what you can do differently to analyze the data properly so we're going to do our AFR, we're going to do the Dyna run now. So with the AFR, we obviously going to use Lambda. So uh, your 14.7 AFR is equal to one Lambda. The less the number goes, the richer you're running. The higher the number goes, the leaner you're running. So obviously the best place to be at cruising altitude for your AFR should be 14.7. But under hard acceleration, for many reasons, it has to run richer. So you get more fuel in there, to so get more combustion, and obviously to help with cooling down the cylinders and everything. Also, too rich is also too bad. You can have smoke out of the exhaust. You can actually make knock by running too rich. What's going to happen is not all the fuel will combust as soon as the spark plug ignites. Your walls or your piston might still be wet. And it can just make another ignition causing knock. So that's pretty interesting. If you guys didn't know it, I also just uh, found out about that recently when I did some research. So with a forced induction, we want to run about zero point in between 0 0.75 and 0 0.8. If you're normally aspirated, you want to run between 0 0.8 and 0 0.85. So I'm going to show you guys how to properly test this. Um, so we're going to put all the values in like before. So let me quickly show you guys. Okay, so here we are. So the first thing you actually want to have on your VCDS is your engine speed. Secondly, you want the current of oxygen sensor on bank one. So if we can continue it, it's broadband sensor. So as you guys can see, it's reading in Lambda. The car is currently off. That's why you don't see any RPMs as well as the Lambda being zero. And then after that is your specified value, which is one. So let's quickly start the car. Okay, so as you guys can see now, the RPMs is a thousand is busy dropping, which is obviously normal. It's just trying to see if there's like a cold start or whatsoever. So it's going to stop a thing about 750 area. 760, 750, there we go. So as you guys can see, our Lambda is about over spec, like on spec, 0 0.998. So there's it's a little bit off by 0 0.020. So then it's obviously oxygen bank sensor. Our specified value is how much it should be is one. So obviously if I accelerate, I don't know if it will show anything. There we guys can see it actually just went there very lean on the specified because I had to let go off. So obviously what you're going to do is going to make sure you group your UDS and you also turn your turbo mode on. I actually did it with like beforehand. I'm sorry about that. So also what we're going to do is we're just going to say log um, and we're going to just say browse. We're going to say on our desktop and we're just going to say AFR. So like I mentioned, what we're going to do now is we're going to go quickly to the road and we are going to test it out. Please go to a safe road. There should be no one on the road. Do not put yourself and other people in danger. So I recommend you guys to go into third gear when doing this pull. You just won't reach that high top speeds. Uh, so you just need like a little bit of spread. Third gear is more than enough. So we're quickly going to head out to the road and we're going to do the test. Okay, so here we go. We're locked in third gear. I click start, foot to the floor. And the car shifted. Don't worry, that is just a speed alarm. It's always so that I know that I should never cross that speed. Okay, so we did our test. We're gonna say stop. We're gonna quickly head home and I'm gonna show you guys the new way you can actually analyze it. 
we are currently back home and we are going to analyze our data. So you guys are probably thinking now, what the heck am I doing in Excel? So how can I explain it? The datazap.me technically takes the, the Excel spreadsheet and elapses it into like a graph. So what we're going to do is we're just going to skip the graph, unfortunately, and we are going to check out. So what we're going to do is we're going to say open. Uh, and we're just going to check out if we can just see all the statistics on Excel. You can obviously probably move it into a graph if you want to, but we're not going to do that. Um, so obviously now we're going to say open. We're going to choose where the file is. So it's on my desktop and obviously it doesn't show anything. So we're going to say all files because that's obviously Excel files only. We're going to click on AFR. We're going to give it a second and it's going to pop up all the information. So I just really want to go through it. This is all the information it has captured throughout the run. It looks crazy now. It looks mind blowing, but let's quickly just fix it up. So as you guys can see, this B section is a timestamp. It's just technically when it happened and so forth. We're just going to press delete. Over here again on D, we got another timestamp. We're going to clear it. And here by F, we got another timestamp. So as you guys can see, you can already read so much better just by doing those little things. Okay, we're just going to move it out quickly. So there we go. So now we've got our three things. We got our engine speed here on the left. We got our actual lambda and we've got our set point lambda. So this is obviously low RPMs. We are not going to bother too much around the low RPMs. I think we're going to start talking here by the... Let's see, we started to accelerate over here. We can even start talking here about a 2,280 Lambda. So as you guys can see, the car, I do know that this was like when I floored it. So as you guys can see, the car was requesting for one Lambda. Obviously at this at this specific place, the turbo hasn't boosted yet. So I think the car only boosts between three, three and a half thousand RPMs after I've done the turbo reconditioning, which kind of sucks because it used to boost earlier. So, but we're still, we'll still get into that in another video. So now let's quickly have a look here. We're asking for one and here it's showing two, 0 0.926. So it's, oh, oopsie. It's still in range. It's not too bad, but it would have been nicer if it was a little bit better. So we're quickly going to go down and as you guys can see, I would say about year is when the turbo booster because you can actually see the numbers are starting to fluctuate. So it's starting to like compromise for the turbo kicking in. So year for 3000 RPMs, uh, we got 0 0.956 and it's asking for 0 0.98. And that's fantastic. Like the closer we are, the better it is. So now you guys are probably asking or thinking to yourself, how do I know if it's too much or too little? Remember, if your numbers is out by far, it could mean several things. It could mean that maybe you've got a bad fuel pump, bad high pressure fuel pump, you've got an injector staying open or injector not opening fully or not spraying correctly or whatever the case is. So it can just totally mess up, like mess up your Lambda. All right, so if we quickly continue looking over here, um, oh yeah, just to answer your question quick, by how much difference should you start to worry? I would say... Even if, let's say, like a zero point... Okay, let's say, for example, th this one is what we're asking for, right? 0 0.994 is very, very close. Maybe if it was about 0 0.9, I would start, like, worry a little bit. Like, that is where you'd say that something is something is not 100% as it should be but it can happen that at certain times it injects a little bit more fuel it does correction because it does happen so whenever let's say it's bad and it's bad by 100 0 0.100 and then you go to the next one it's also 0 0.100 0 0.1 0 0.1 continuing continuing then it's something really bad so, but if it's in a close range i would say you don't want to see too much fluctuation about 0 0.05 that that's like set point if we can call it like that there is no right there is no wrong to be spot on on your specified value is what you want but it's just that's the perfect world so let's quickly continue. We're asking for 936. We got 919, 917, 934. So what we actually initially want to see is I'm just going to basically focus more on this G graph for now. So 
four turbo cars that force indu induction cars. In it includes obviously supercharged cars, such as mine is turbocharged. You want to see about 0 0.75 to 0 0.8. So that would be the specific that that would be like the ideal thing to see once you floor your car. So obviously we know that the turbo kicks in at about three thousand RPMs, and as you guys can see, we're still asking for like one lambda near the okay zero point nine three lambda. It's still a lot for a spe specifically at this stage. So obviously you can see it's decreasing, decreasing. Here it actually increased a bit. Uh, this could also be because of ignition retardation. Do not forget that. So 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Oh my gosh. And here we can see we're going into the 0 0.8. So we are getting there. For normal aspirated cars, you want to see between 0 0.8 and 0 0.85. Once again, I just want to clear out to you guys that if your graph is looking like, well, your info is looking like mine, it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Uh, it could be right, it could be for fuel consumption, reliability purposes and that. Obviously seeing 0 0.75 to 0 0.8 is going full out, that is like drag spec and all of that kind of things. So even seeing this is not bad, it's just for reliability purposes as well. So if we continue going down, we can see the 0 0.8 and if I go over here, we can see 0 0.876 and we and the car is asking for 0 0.897. So quick terms, how much is that? That's about 0 0.020. So that's not too bad. That's like in the 50 spec range. So we're going to go down, keep on going down. Here's a 0 0.825 at 5,000 RPMs. Um, here you can obviously see 0 0.819. We're asking for 0 0.825 we're like spot on this is this is actually like a really good graph also i will i want to actually explain to you guys why you're seeing the number is dropping the higher the rpms goes i will explain that to you now so if we look over here here is 0 0.819 825 if we continue going down let's see here we reach 6000 rpms and here you guys can see it shifted. The car automatically shifted at 6,300, which is a little bit more than usual, much more. Usually the car shifts at 6,010, 6,050. It fluctuates sometimes, but this time it shifted a bit later. As you guys can see, as soon as it shifted, it's obviously pulling out the fuel. And then um, what happens is your car is running leaner. So as you guys can see, I would say the most, well, the least we had was a 0. 8035. I think this at 6,300 RPMs was the richest we have ran. And then obviously looking here, we got a 0 0.827 Lambda. Um, this could be because of just when it was about to shift. As you guys can see from this time stamp to this time stamp, the RPMs is the same. So it could have been that it already started to lift off. If we look in front of it, here we can see our actual lambda was 0 0.792, which is, this is like the range that you want to see your car running is between 0 0.75 and 0 0.8 if you're forced induction. Okay, so let's quickly talk about why is the car becoming richer and richer as you progress with your run. So what happens is if you're driving at a low RPM rate, obviously you need to know that heat is being made by combustion as well as like movement and friction and everything. So the slower your RPMs is, the lower it is, the slower everything is and that. So the car doesn't generate so much heat. So obviously the more heat is inside of the engine, the worse it actually is because it makes... Um, pre-combustion like uh, ignition uh, it causes ignition retardation which is part of knock so obviously the more your car increases its uh, rpms the more fuel you actually got to inject to keep the uh, the temperature inside of your combustion chamber low so that is why you guys are seeing a constant increase in richness so obviously if i, I could have believed if this car just had to carry on 7000 8000 rpms we'll just get richer and richer and richer once again, running too rich is also bad. It's bad for your catalytic converter. It's bad for fuel consumption. It's bad for the atmosphere. There is a lot of reasons why it can be bad. Like I mentioned earlier, it can also be very, very bad because if, let's say, your spark plug ignites and it doesn't burn all the fuel in the combustion chamber, what will happen is some of the fuel will remain on the piston's wall, like on the sleeve wall, on your piston itself, and it can actually ignite because it's already got fuel in it. It's ready. It just needs heat. It just needs that perfect time and it can make knock.
Okay, so there we go. That is an easy way how you guys can analyze your lambda. And as you guys can see here, these numbers are just bonkers because obviously what happens you lift your foot up from uh from your pedal your accelerator uh, acceleration pedal which means there's no more fuel igniting in it so obviously your sensor will read only oxygen because it's just going to be oxygen traveling through your engine uh no fuel at all and that is why it increases so you'll see i think 15.9 or something here we go 15.9998 that is like the highest your sensor will read. That is its range. It's in a certain range. Above it, it won't read. Uh, below a certain point, it won't read. I'm not sure how much it is. I don't want to lie to you. But anyway, okay, so this video has been very, very long, but I do hope that it was really informative. Please let me know what you guys think of uh, think of this video in the comments. Uh, any feedback, whatever you guys are experiencing, what you're seeing, if you have got any questions, do let me know. I'm not an expert, but I'm trying to share all the information I've gathered uh, through all the things that i'm trying to learn and experience and etc and etc so thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this video please make sure to support it by giving a big like and if you want to see any similar video hit any icon on the screen if you'd love to support the channel especially if you're new hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe and then i'll see all of you legends in my next video but for now peace out